Matthew here from IndieWorkingMe.com and welcome to this open vault or behind the scenes of what's going on here. I haven't done these in a while, but I have a bunch of fun stuff to show you. So let's just get right to it. It's all going to be one take and it's going to be pretty lousy quality. So sit back and enjoy. First thing to show you is we got a bunch of new dice. Look at all that bling. They're pretty too. Like I, I think my favorite is this candy colored one. Look at that. Just make sure you don't eat them. And then we got these gold marble ones. They all have the mini Wargaming logo on the six, not the one, because we're not heathens. And then we got our silver fox dice. Like, look at those. That looks pretty awesome. Anyway, so these are all available. As you can see, there's limited quantities of each of them. Some of them we reorder, some of them we don't. Just depends with the what's available with uh, ChessX. So you can go to shop.miniwargaming.com to grab those, or to grab any of our standard ones of the Beatmap Bat Wrap or the Steve Dice, the Josh Dice, the Taco Cat Dice, the Luca ones, our standard white ones, the Mark and Dave ones, all sorts of widgets and stuff too. And magnets. We have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of magnets and shirts, uh, all that stuff. Anyways, let's move on. I'm going to close this door. So I'll give you a bit of a tour. It might be a while. It's been a while since we've like walked around. I'm not going to show every part of the building, but uh, so you can just see what's up. Got our gaming hall, of course, if you're familiar with that. The people who come into the store are welcome to use this when we're not running events, which currently we haven't been. Um, but we're starting to talk about some different ones that we can do, such as having people in for immersive narrative campaigns. If you actually, uh, well, I'm even thinking of trying to get it so we can have some guests come in just for regular narrative campaigns too. So just like one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, whatever happens to be. Kind of like the ones you see me film with Steve, Luca, or Josh normally that you guys can actually come in as well. Go down this back hallway, get my keys ready, because obviously everything is locked up tight. I'm not gonna show you any codes. I'll get my systems are off right now anyways, because we're all here. This is our back way in. So back here is our 3D printing room. So we got a bunch of the AnyCubic filament printers, and then we've got a really nice um, form labs resin printer as well. And Steve is the one that kind of mans all of this. Um, in fact, maybe I'll sneak into the store and show you some really cool Mordheim train he did. You can go check out his channel. He did a whole Mordheim, Mordheim narrative campaign. So that's at Mountain Miniatures Gaming. And so this is all his stuff in here, but yeah. Anyways, 3D printing room. And then this is our B-roll room. Trust me, we're gonna get to the good stuff in just a moment. Let's see where we take shots of the armies and all of that. So, but uh, it's a Tuesday right now. You're gonna be seeing this on a Saturday, but so it's a little quiet. I'm getting ready to film an Age of Sigmar battle report. So there's our studios, um, a little bit of mess. Luca and Scari. I don't talk to nerds. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. There's Scari. Hello. Doing an open vault here. Hello, open vault, how are you? And you guys are playing 40k today? We're playing a, a ludicrous, Luca's Ludicrous Legion Lockdown. What does that mean? It means that Luca and I get to randomly determine a legion and a chapter, and we basically fight each other. And then we randomly determine world traits, we randomly determine relics, and then we build based on what's in the collections. Okay. And you got yeah. your table already set up? That's right. What's this supposed to represent? Um, well, this is a complex table. <laughs> It's a complex, <laughs> so it's some sort of building. Yeah, so you, the whole point of. here is it's we we can play inside of that complex. So oh, you could set see. it up so that we're just going to take the roof off and then play. Uh, I so see. it's essentially we can go into that little complex. It's probably going to be maybe objectives in there. Oh, that's cool. And so we can play outside and inside, but not everything will fit inside. So you need to build an army that can kind of do both. Yeah, that can still hold ground out here, Correct. but that can take ground inside the building. Yeah, so um, because we we like to play games with tables that we wish we had when we were kids. That's right. And yeah, that's all we are, right? <laughs> we're big right. kids playing with toys that we never had when we were kids. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Anyways, uh, and also, we both of us went to the Grand Narrative event. Oh, that was so fun. It was awesome. And you've already put up a video about it on your channel. I did. Scardcast. Yes. I'll be putting up a video in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to... Um, yeah, it's going to take me a bit of time to get that ready. Got all the footage and everything, and Michael upstairs is working so on fun. editing that. I so. can't wait to do it again. I'm yes. getting a probably going to get a cosplay commissioned for Archon Scar. That's right. Next year. With Fred and Al designs. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. Yes. I'm really so, looking forward to it. So go check that out. If I remember, I'll try to put links to everything I talk about in here. <laughs> 
But if not, Good scarred night. cast. So show your shirt. Show your shirt. There it is. That's what you search uh, for. There's cat hair in here. Hold That's all right. <laughs> it's not that good a camera. Yes, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so check that out. We're thinking of actually running our own, like I said before, immersive narrative events. We're already planning on one for next August, I think, which sounds like a long time away, but it's not actually because it's already December and it's almost next year anyways. So that's our live studio setup. Um, Steve still does live stuff in here. We don't really do live shows right now. They're on hold or something. And Luca is, I can hear, I can hear, there he is. Yes, yes, I'm currently struggling. <laughs> what are you supposed to be doing? I'm trying to find uh, an Iron Father, but I'm having a hard time. So you're supposed to be playing Space Wolves? No, I'm doing oh, Iron Hands. Oh, sorry, Iron Hands. Yeah, the new Iron Hands, I want to, like, he's got a Warsmith as Iron Warrior, so I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I had an Iron Father, my guys. But I don't think, because we don't have uh, everything in our collection, that's the only chapter we don't have. Because uh, Steve and I painted one up and sold it a while ago. Because, like, who's going to want Iron Hands? Like, we already have so many other chapters. We don't need Iron Hands. So, uh... Joke's on you. Joke's on me. So I have to play the... He's a successor Iron Hand. The only one I have to do it for. Uh, but I can't find a Tech Marine. Or a Primaris Tech Marine. I, I, have I don't know if we have any of these... Because our green Marine collection is we have, old. We have all the other characters in Primaris. Yeah, but if it's more than a year or two old, we probably don't have it. Yeah. I haven't updated it in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I think... I'm thinking... I, I feel like I have one upstairs... I'm gonna go check upstairs as like a good stand-in option. Otherwise, there's the Blood Angels have one, but I don't want to. I don't want to run Blood Angels. I see. Uh, yeah, as my successor, so I'll figure it out. I'll, I'm, that's my current struggle. Okay, well, have fun with that. Thank you. Yeah, trying to play to the narrative, right? I'm trying to my best. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the fun part. I got tech marines. I guess we use the tech marines. And what's this? We got a whole lot of plastic lined up here. Dave is getting ready to do a bunch of videos on the Ravage Star miniatures. If you are one of the people who contributed to that campaign, first off, thank you for allowing us to dive into this awesome part of the hobby. As you can see, there's a lot of progress. We've got fully completed PVC models. And so the, there's more and more getting completed every day. We don't have a ship date yet. I'll leave that to Dave to give you updates on that kind of stuff because I don't have all the details, whereas he's much more involved with this project. Um, but, uh, and, I'll, and I'll once again try to put a link in the description because even if you didn't back the campaign, you can still actually go in and do a late pledge um, and get the stuff anyways. I think there's a couple of things that only backers of the original campaign could get, or at least some bonuses. But uh, you can pretty much get everything that's here. And I'm fairly certain. Watch out for videos from Dave. We actually have a second channel that he'll be posting as well. It's a miniatures. It's Mini Worry Me Miniatures. Because he'll be posting a lot, we didn't want it to gum up the feed here necessarily. So you can check that out. Once again, I'll try to remember to put links to all of this in the description. If there's anything I forgot, Put a comment down and say, hey, you forgot the link to this. And then I'll update the description with it. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. Now that I'm seeing it in person. And we've also got stuff upstairs, which I'm not going to show you yet. I'll leave that to Dave. Don't want to spoil all his fun. Whew, so much terrain. We've actually been setting up more shelves in the back, which I'll show you. Um, in here, uh, I may have already seen this in a YouTube short or in a Facebook post. But uh, some new terrain that I got in. So this is actually from a company called Miniature Scenery out in Australia. You found it? You found it! Yay! I got the Iron Father. Oh, you feel better? The uh, I do feel much better. Good. But he's gonna have to go with the successor guys, so it's gonna have to be uh, their Iron Father's honor the, the traditions of their founding chapter by painting their armor and their scheme while they all stick to the. Successor. Or maybe he's just visiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so this is from a company called Miniature Scenery. Um, if you watched a Death Watch Craft Worlds, the narrative campaign I did, there was a bunch of the MDF terrain um, that was by them, by them as well. And I just love this table. It's uh, actually then Adam from Greenleaf is the one who assembled and painted and destroyed it so that it could look all post-apocalyptic. Now, this is for a super secret project that I'm not going to tell you about right now because it might not be for a few months. But I'm impatient and I want to use the terrain. And so Steve and I are actually starting a new narrative campaign tomorrow. It'll be Tau versus Chaos. And so I'm going to be using this in the first episode. Um, so it can be used for 40k, obviously. It's all these one-by-one -one tiles. I actually have a bunch more of them on the shelf. And uh, so it's all very modular. You can set it up in many different ways. Um, so this this is not like a 4x4 four four board that's permanently stuck like this. Like every single building can be removed. Uh, even all these walls and shrubbery can be taken off as well but just a fantastic looking board. And so I've got my Chaos all set up, ready to go for our game tomorrow. I don't know when the Tau versus Chaos narrative campaign is gonna go out. We're gonna see how, we gotta get a little ahead on it first. So I'm hoping by the end of December or early January for that. 
so you can stay tuned for that. They're playing word bears amongst other chaos versus him. It'll be pretty gnarly. So more and more terrain, more and more. So you can see there's more of those one by one tiles are right there, and then more of the train up there, and then more of the train over here for for that same board. I, I went a little overboard about a lot of it. I'm getting ready to play an Age of Sigmar game today against Ben from Ireland. Um, and so I'm going to be playing the Ogres, and I want to focus on Lead Belchers. And I'm going to be doing something I don't like to do, but I really want to do today because I want to use enough Lead Belchers. I'm going to be using some guys on square bases because I'm borrowing some of Steve's Lead Belchers. Because I only have eight of them. Well, I have ten, but they'll come in fours now. And so the nice thing is, though, because of the size of the bases, that there's not really a big difference. Whereas like when you go down to the 25 mil and you switch to the 20 mil squares from the old fantasy, it really does make a big difference for how the game plays. So these aren't too bad. You just get a little extra whatever from the corners. So I just don't like the look of it. I prefer the circle bases when it comes to Age of Sigmar. Like I get the square bases for playing the Rangan Flank games, but in a game like Age of Sigmar, I, I like to be able to put all the stuff on square, on, on circular bases. So that's actually my force. So lead belchers, lead belchers, gluttons, gluttons, butcher, slaughter master, and then three of the iron belchers or lead belchers, whatever they're called. But or iron blasters. So yeah, haven't really played them this way before. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. There's not a whole lot more to show. Oh wait, I was gonna. I know what I was gonna show you. Two more things. Let's go to the scary basement first. So we come through here. So the scary basement. <laughs> not that scary. It was always just used for storing junk, like literally, you know, whenever you have garbage when you move, you don't want to get rid of it because you don't know if you're going to want to use it. So I have to duck my way through here. And so what we've been doing is setting up shelves because we've run out of space in our hallway. I'm going to wave my hand about and get the automatic thing. Come on. Light. Light. There we are. So we got more shelves in here for more terrain and for models and stuff so we'll be moving a bunch of stuff that we the things that we use less often will be moved back here to make way for all the new stuff that don't have shelves right now and that way we're encouraged to use the new stuff and then every once in a while we can come back here and pull out the old stuff like old boards that we don't want to get rid of or more terrain so you got lots of shelves that are going to be spreading out um, but anyways and back there there's a bunch of stuff we want to get rid of we're thinking in january february of actually having an in-person event just an auction to get rid of a lot of old stuff. We have a lot of new in box stuff, but then also there's tons and tons of sprues. Some of them with a large amount of stuff still intact. Like there's like an entire Chaos Knight back there that we just don't have any need for because we have so many. So then we come up here, let's turn off the light. It's dark. And then come back out here. We're gonna head to the store because Steve, after he finished his campaign with uh, all the cool 3D printed training he did, he's put it in the store for them to use for now until he needs it again. Gotta find the right key for that. The store's not open yet. They're closed Monday and Tuesday, as you can see. So come in here. This is not, for those of you wondering, this is not our store. It's our building, so we rent out the space, but it's run by Max. This is the, war, he calls the store the Wargaming Bunker. So this is the cool terrain that he, he made. This is, I think like 99% of the terrain is from printable scenery. And they've been kind enough to give us access to their STLs so that we can make their terrain and obviously to promote it and stuff. But, uh, and then Steve printed it over the course of a couple weeks with all those six printers. And then spray painted it and did a, a pretty quick paint job that Looks pretty awesome, especially once you put it all together. That piece is old. That's not part of this. That's, that's actually something Fireman Tim made like 12 years ago or something, or 10 years. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. So 3D printing is awesome. I love it, especially for terrain. Just see all the cool stuff that he's able to make. Obviously, we have some things mixed in, like those mausoleum things are from Games Workshop. But most of this other stuff is printable scenery. It just looks super cool. Like I said, he did a whole Mordheim campaign and uh, it's actually really good. So go check it out on his channel, Not Miniatures Gaming. So I think that's everything. So also we do have our lifetime vault memberships right now. And so um, for a limited time, you can actually 
get a lifetime vault membership so you pay once and you never pay again. So that's at miniwargaming.com slash lifetime. So make sure you go check that out. That's all I have to show you today. Hope you enjoyed this open vault. If you have questions or specific things you'd like me to go into depth more in future open vaults, because I'm planning on doing these a little more regular. I'm not going to say they're going to be every week. I'm also thinking of like making like short, one, less than one minute videos and just putting them up as shorts. And that way you can kind of get little tidbits and little insights into our day-to-day -day operations and all that. So leave your questions below that you'd want answered or things that you'd like to see in future open vaults. And happy working. I'm going to have to flip this around to get the button though. Woo!